we're going to be running down the top 10 best settings for Serato DJ Pro that I wish I knew about when I was a beginner DJ. And make sure you stay till the end of this video because I'm going to be giving you some of the biggest tips for using Serato and becoming a professional DJ along the way. So you don't want to miss a minute of this video. So right off the hop, as soon as you get Serato installed, you're going to be looking at a window like this. You probably won't have this button here, so I'm going to turn that off. But right here, this is just your like prep window. And what you need to know about the first one, analyze files. There are so many guys who don't know about this little button, but it's because as soon as you install Serato, you're going to plug your controller in and start playing with it, right? That's not the first thing you want to do. You want to make sure that you know that there's an online mode and an offline mode. When you're in offline mode, it's pretty well just to work on your crates, clean them up. As you'll see here, I got a lot of bunch of these orange files. And what they say is this track could not be found where it is and it was supposed to be here in this file here so a good tab that you want to have on a lot of the time is location it's going to tell you that like a file was here on your hard drive at this specific spot but now it's not there so you got to find out if you moved it somewhere or it got deleted you don't ever want to break that file path because once you break that file path you're going to have orange files super important a question so many guys ask me about and just to get this location tab what you're going to do you're going to come here to the side this little arrow it's going to give you all these extra metadata points that like if you want to fill out comments if you have like comments where you're going to put stuff there or the genre like in my comments on some of these tracks there are some this is where you're going to do a lot of your prepping when i'm actually djing i don't have that much out i just have song artist bpm key which let me tell you guys right now if you guys don't know how to beat match don't worry about key like throw the word key out of your out of your brain don't even worry about it don't think about it there's so many guys who get hooked up on like oh i'm not i'm not melodic key mixing but they don't even know how to beat match like if you don't know how to beat match of course you do not know how to melodic key fucking match okay like obviously it's very clear you're not gonna know how to do that so i would highly recommend just worry about beat matching so getting your bpms on here bpm must equal bpm like there's no breaking that that's like the one rule of all time you could have like a, a 127 bpm track and a 1 115 bpm track now you're just going to match them up with the tempo fader so that they come to the middle say like 120 122 or something you're going to bring them both one down one up match at 122 bpm equals bpm congratulations you got your first mix in the bag let's go after you understand what these windows are you're not actually going to have any music so what you want to do is you can just like click and drag from folders or you can just come here i have a lot of hard drives so yours probably won't look like this but you'll just find where your music is like if you save to my music that's not where i put my music but if that's where you save your music that's where your music will be for me i save in a music folder like an actual drive just for music then i'll come through here i like to keep all my folders nice and clean if you like dig in here i got fancy hyphens to make stuff look good but however you get your music, you're just going to want to get music. And then say you wanted to bring in like the Alicia Keys Girl on Fire album because some girl wanted it. You're just going to grab it from your hard drive. Boom. Bring it in to Serato. And as you're going to see here, nothing has been analyzed. So I'm just going to hit this little button. Boom. It's going to take care of that for me. Now my music is analyzed. It's pulling out like beat grids, BPM key. It's getting all this data for you. That's going to be really helpful because now if I wanted to like mix this album up I would just I probably sort it by BPM like this and then the way I usually play is I'll start like very low and work my way up and build energy obviously you can't be up at 128 for too long you got to come back down so from there you're going to have like transition tracks if you don't know anything about transition tracks drop a comment email me andrew at the djconnect.com i will sort you out i'll kind of teach you what those are now after you got that down pat you've learned how to put music into your hard drive or into serato um if you just want to make your own crate like say this is my my new fire crates um what i would highly recommend is start making sub crates so that would be like your top crate and then this would be like 
90s hip hop. 2020 hip hop. And put that in here. And if you want to get like even more dialed in, like how I would, I would just make like a, this is my hip hop crate here. So now I'll drop these in even deeper. So now I've even subcrated those. You can make like 90s, 2000s, 2010, 2020 hip hop. Going past, I, I always fight with this idea of should I break it down even further into five years, but I don't think it really matters. Like in the grand scheme of things, what really matters is being able to find your music when you need your music. Do not get overrun with music. It's it's like a curse that all DJs have. And I have it too. So don't get worried. If it happens, it happens. The more you work at your crates, the better they become. The, the nicer they're gonna become, and then just start deleting as well. Don't be scared to delete music. Usually before a gig, I'll always go through a crate and just like delete 50 to 100 songs out of it. If I know that like it's not working anymore or it's just like not the vibe, that's something you can only learn when you're at a gig and you play that song and it fails on you, and then you kind of go from there. Now we got our library, we got our crates, we know how crates work, we got structure. Um, next up we got smart crates, but we're not gonna dig into that for this video. That's getting a little advanced, not something you guys need to worry about. You know how to analyze your music, um, I would click this cogwheel as well, hit set key, set beat grid. This is something that happens occasionally. If it happens, you'll know why. I'm not going to talk on that. I don't want you to set a BPM range right now and like mess things up for the future. So I would say leave that to none. And then for the very next thing, I'll just teach you what's inside of this window as well before we hit the settings. But you got your music. It's here. The next thing up is like a very, very pro tip, but I color code my music. I'm only saying this to you now because if you do it now, you're gonna save yourself tons of hours in the future. Even if this is something you even care to do, like maybe you don't even care for this. The further I've got in my career, I found it's nice to kind of color code my music just because you're gonna have all this music, so much music. I like to color code it with the type that it is. So red is normally gonna be like house music. So right here we got um, Ariana Grande and Zed. So this was a very pop house track. This is Let's Get Loud. So this is like old Latin music. I, I don't know why I picked yellow, but it's just what popped into my mind. So whatever works for you, pick a color and kind of like green is mainly dance hall or it's tech house or it's clean edits. But 99% of the time, it's gonna be dance hall. There's gonna be overlap, that's okay, don't worry about it. Just try and figure out a setting that's gonna work for you and stick to it. It's gonna pay so many dividends in the future. Next up, we got our music. How do we load it? One of my favorite shortcuts is just shift and then your arrow key this way or arrow key that way. So shift left drops you on deck number one shift right puts you on deck number two there are a ton of keyboard shortcuts but i have another video on that so definitely go check that out what you're going to be playing with is your controller so feel free to turn it on at this point these shortcuts it's nice to have if you have your computer on a laptop in front of you then it's going to be nice you're going to want to know about the shift left shift right but you do not need to know the keyboard shortcuts on mixing inside of serato right now we're doing the basics next up we're just going to hit this cog wheel we're going to hit our settings so I wouldn't recommend this right now, especially if you're just playing around at home. This is something that like if you're at the club and you don't want to make a mistake, you turn this on right now. Don't worry about it. Lock playing deck. I wouldn't worry about that either. It's not even something I've turned on myself in the club. So not something you need to worry about. Set cues and loops chronologically. So normally that's how it would be anyways, but I do have some songs where like I do tone plays. So I don't want them all to be sorted or it's going to mess up my cue points. If you're not doing tone plays or anything right now, I don't, it is something safe. Like you can put this on. I'll leave that up to you. Not something I use, but it's just getting those cue points always chronologically in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whereas sometimes I'll be like one, two, three, four will move me through the track, but like four, five, six, seven, eight could be just like a word or like a, Hey, something that I need to use in a set. Enable hot cues, absolutely crucial. Track end warning might be helpful for you. It's just gonna blink when your track is ending. Beat jump controls, you're gonna wanna learn about that. I would watch another video on beat jumps completely though. Uh, I love all of these on play from start, play from first cue point, 
instant doubles, turn off effects. These are all going to help you. Analyze stems. If you got a good computer, turn it on. If you don't, I wouldn't worry about stems right now. Everything else is good. Simple sync, snap to beat grid. You're good there. Auto gain, good. Audio, if you got a good computer, turn this down. You don't got a great computer, turn it up. Next up, library and display. Um, I don't, I hope nobody uses iTunes anymore. Do not use iTunes. If you're still using iTunes in 2024, what are you doing? You maybe DJing is not for you. I probably wouldn't touch that. Custom crate columns is you saw earlier in that video. I had different columns in my crates. Um, if you turn that on, you can only have one style for all crates. For me, I have different things for different things, right? I got different crates that do different things. Whereas like this one, I might need to know this information. Some, I only need to know like what's there. So I have custom crate columns. You don't need to. Everything else in here should be OG, but uh, yeah, show tempo. It's good. Hide tracks. Don't turn that on right now. Do not do that. EQ'd colored waveforms. I'm not sure if this comes on or off. Again, if you got a good computer, it's fine to do it. If you don't have a good computer, don't do it. Color key display is just turning them into a color. And again, like I color code my stuff. I think it's just another way to like on the fly differentiate things in, in a different way for your brain to work. So whenever that's an option, I think it's a good option. Performance pad layout, you're good to go. That should be default. I normally keep everything of mine on default. Cross fader. If you want to scratch, turn this all the way up all the way on because when you're scratching you want your cut to be very tight if you want it to like slowly go from one side to another which i wouldn't recommend doing that with a crossfader but if that's what you want to do bring it all the way down for any scratch dj you want that all the way up turn it on all the way sometimes it looks like a picnic table and that should be good turn on your sampler everyone wants a sampler and i will leave a link in the description for a pack of free sound effects for you guys if you guys want some free sound effects right out of the gate i'm gonna drop a link for you guys right in the comments i will make it a pinned comment as well and also if you guys like this video please like and subscribe youtube is awesome i love it and i love you guys and other than that like we should be good I kind of just wanted to rapid fire out of this, give you guys some very quick wins, teach you about how the software works and you're good to go. So if you guys got more questions, comments, just drop them below and I will get back to you. Email me, andrew at the djconnect.com. Like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Let's go.